Hi, this is Kai from New Electronic Frontier and Modular Wednesday. And in today's session, I'm going to talk about filters. So the filter is the one element within your setup that really determines the sound of your voices and can really shape it a lot. So a lot of typical synthesizer sounds you know from <clears throat> songs um, are really shaped with the filter. And today we're just going to show the um, regular rack, uh, VCV rack filter, so the standard filter that comes with it. I added it here. The setup is pretty much the same as we had it in the uh, sessions beforehand. I just rearranged the modules a little bit so you can see better here what I'm doing. So the elements of a basic filter are quite, quite easy. So you have a cutoff, and I come to this in a second to explain what a cutoff is and does. We have a resonance and we have a drive here, which is kind of an add-on already so that you can have an, a little overdrivey, crunchy sound out of the filter that is not per se a standard filter of, on, on all uh, filters. Um, and then you for sure have like the CV inputs for all these three elements. So you can modulate these values here externally in whatever means, then you have an input you have a low pass filter output and you have a high pass filter output. And we come to this in a second. So this is a very basic filter. And um, if it comes down to filters, there's tons of different filters out there, not only in the virtual world of VCV rack, but also in the hardware world. So if you go for a filter, the best thing is really to yeah try it out, listen to it um, whenever you have the chance to to determine what you really want because they sound pretty different um, and you know th there's a whole variety of it. So if you look up the usual synth shops for filters you will find tons of different styles and what they can do or, or not do. So let's jump over a little bit um, to my uh, iPad for a second. So um, let's dive into what, what filters actually are. If you see here, I've, I've, um, I've drawn and copied a, a simple diagram, which is like the frequencies of your sound you're having, right? So um, it's like um, the y-axis is um, the amplitude and the x-axis is the frequency spectrum ranging from low frequencies to very high frequencies. And this is a typical frequency uh, like distribution, um, just drawn here to show what a filter does. So first of all, if we come to the basic filter um, and, and the most used filter, this is probably the low pass filter. So what happens here is pretty easy. You put a filter up on this waveform and it has typically this form kind of. And what happens now is that everything that is on the right side of this filter is actually erased from the sound, okay? So you see, you cut pretty clearly out the frequencies. And the more you punch in the filter, as it's a low pass filter, that means everything that is low or below this line passes. If you push it further here, okay? the more of the frequencies, the high frequencies you um, eliminate. And the rest that's left, this is a lows that pass. Okay, so low pass filter, pretty easily. So when you come to filters and, and you read about filters, you will be, uh, you know, you, you will find things like 12 dB and 24 dB and, and stuff like this. It's also called the filter slope. Um, and that determines how aggressive uh, the filter is or and, and how hard it gets down to the sound. So what does it mean? So, and I don't want to confuse you with like other things like poles and stuff like that. So if you look at this, this might be a 12 dB. I, I say this is a 12 dB. Probably that is not correctly drawn here, but but doesn't matter. So this is a 12 dB. So that means this slope here um, is, you know, not, not too aggressive. Then when you have 24 dB, the slope gets more aggressive. 
Okay, so this could be like a 24 dB. And if you have a 6 dB, it gets more lush. So, and you can see here pretty clearly that you can wonderfully, if you think about um, these guys over here, you know, with a 6 dB, I just cut off this thingy here, this peak here. With a 12 dB, I cut off the whole flank already. And with a 24 dB, I cut off a whole chunk of all that. So, um, and there's even steeper ones. So the, you get also filters with like 48 and, and whatever. So really steep filters um, and, and really lush ones. So they're determined how aggressive a filter cuts in or doesn't cut in, okay? And you really should try this out. Some filters actually have a switch where you can switch uh, um, the slope of the filter on it. So I have one, for example, where you can switch between 12 and 24, which is pretty handy. If you're looking for a particular sound, so for example, the legendary Moog filters, they are 24 dB uh, filters in a special design called the letter filter. So this is 24 dB. If you have a standard Dupfer filter that has usually 12 dB, but there's also different kinds out of it, as said. So really take a look at it. So now, when it comes to the different types of filters, let's talk about this a second. You have, as I said, this is a typical low pass filter, everything behind the line passes, okay? But then there is another version and this is a high pass filter. And that means this filter covers everything and cuts out the stuff on the low side of the so that means the lows are cut out and you want to have this, for example, to clean up your mix a bit. So if you have, uh, if you want to have a clean mix and you have, um, not the bass synth, but they want to have bass already, but if you have other uh, voices, for example, and, and they have a very big bandwidth, you may, might want to clean up the bass layers a little bit to just have the height. So what happens now is this is a high pass filter. So this is a, HPF, this is a LPF, okay? And now comes the tricky part. If I combine both of them and I kick in a low pass filter here as well, what happens is you get this thing. Well, because you eliminate also this stuff, you just leave this particular band alive, right? And this is why this is called a band pass filter. So band, because you have a particular band in audio um, that you that we let pass and you just cut away everything that's in the low, uh, in the low range of that and everything in the high range of that. So you let it band pass. And now imagine that you um, have these different slopes here, right? You can really, if we go back to the blue one for 20, for 20, 40 B slope, you can really surgically cut out sounds um, out of the spectrum here, right? So you can use a filter for having a specific sound spectrum cut out here. This is what you can put in a bandpass filter. And if it comes to bandpass filters, that goes really crazy because there's bandpass filters that can like you have bands all over an audio spectrum with like 12 bands, which you can set dial in and stuff like that. So super crazy stuff, but you can also create it if you have um, a normal filter, which can do both. And you put two of them behind because one further the high passes, one further the low passes. So you can create your own band pass filter if you don't want to have an extra module for that. Um, yeah, and so that's basically it about how the filters work in basic. So let's get back to our um, action with Flint and unmute so you can hear a little sound here. So you see it's the uh, old very basic tune we uh, used last time. And now let's just put in a filter. So what happens is the filter just goes in between your module out. The module out goes now into the filter. And now we take the band uh, low pass out and put this into 
the in so and what happens now is that you get like this uh, wonderful sound and we let's dial in for a second okay now here's the, our basic tune So now let's see what happens if we put in the cutoff. You can cl clearly hear all the lows, the highs are cut off. VCB rack shows us a frequency where we cut off. So now comes the resonance, and the resonance is something that is just at the point where the slope begins, the resonance actually um, attenuates it um, and, and pushes uh, the, the frequency a bit higher at this particular point. So. You can hear this typically SD sounds, right? So be a bit careful with your ears. <laughs> So, okay, and then last but not least, if this one you have a drive, so you can make it a bit crunchy. So you can see. This is how it goes. Okay, you can see this is like some of the typical sounds. I really you can hear it a little bit. I mean, it's just played around a bit. So now let's do this the other one because this filter, as said, can actually do also a high pass filter output. This is not uh, not for every filter, but this one can. So let's see what this sounds like. You can see, you can clearly hear it's just a high, so no lows in there. Or, or. So okay, that's uh, that's basically it. So um, just to, for today, we just stick around with that, and you're gonna try it out. That's the best. So probably next time or in another session, we can talk about more about filters, and um, I will show some more filters that can do different things. Then we can also create a bandpass filter. I mean, you, I explained to you. I guess you can do it on your own right now. So this is the basic way how filters work. So they really determine the sound. If you have VCB rec loaded. 
Just look around in the library for filters and you will find tons of filters. Try out different ones. Um, you have also a lot of um, filters in here that are also out there in the physical world. So you can try out in software before you buy a hardware one. And it's really, I mean, I'm, I'm at the error of buying one or two filters where I thought they were cool, but they were not really. But uh, yeah, I didn't test them out. So that's a big error. Don't do the same. <laughs> test them out. See how they sound if you lack like the sound. And that's it. So that was today's session about filters. Um, I hope you liked it. Then subscribe and come back because there will be more sessions uh, like this. And uh, yeah, that was Kai from the Electronic Frontier and a modular Wednesday. And thank you for listening and have a nice day.